guys back again with another video <coughs> right now it is 12 44 12 42 in the morning I feel super tired probably should go to bed um, today I watch porn it's too bad though because I really really I realized that I, I, I wrote a post on the um, forum like a seduction forum about why porn makes you suck at game. Then I realized then one poster wrote that you know he loves porn and he has very high sex drive and he still fucks a lot of girls. And he realized that erectile dysfunction it's all in your head. And it makes me realize fuck yes it's all in your head. Like the only reason I think porn is reinforcing that feeling of lack is because the reason I watch the reason I watch porn sometimes is because um, I feel like I don't have that girl in my life and I watch porn to compensate for that and that so the so when I watch porn I'm filled by that lack that feeling of desire and that feeling of lack coming from that place of lack which you cannot <coughs> which is a bad place to come from and like everything you do in life it's all about the intention you're coming from so if you're watching porn and coming from the intention of I don't have woman in my life this is what I want to do in order to feel fulfilled then of course when you go out when you meet girls you're going to project that desire onto her just like the way you're projecting your desire onto the girl on the computer screen and porn so I think a good way to kind of view porn is just like a nice way of releasing yourself and don't make it into an addiction you know, if you're coming from the place of, wow, this is beautiful, like, girls are beautiful, and watching them having sex is beautiful, I guess. If that's a place you want to come from, then I think that should be perfectly fine. But anyway, I was listening to audiobook. I found that I don't really absorb stuff that well on audiobooks compared to reading them. So I was reading through some of the chapters that I already listened to just to kind of reinforce the ideas because there's one chapter about sexual repression uh, the author gave this example about this girl who came into his therapy session and the girl wants to lose weight and the therapist told her that you know yes you want to lose weight um, and I guess most people when they want to lose weight, they want to lose weight because they want to make themselves look more attractive. So this girl, when she wants to lose weight in the therapy, the therapist told her that, you know, you, you're looking, I find you attractive and you have to realize that as you lose more weights, more guys will hit on you. But he told her that this is a place I'm not gonna hit on you uh, because I'm married and so you don't have to worry about me coming onto you. But I want you to be open and honest about how you feel about your own sexuality. And the girl admits that he's afraid of guys because of. He's afraid of attention from guys and that's why he that's why she eats so much to gain weight to make herself look more unattractive in order to feel more comfortable so guys don't hurt on her and it's a vicious cycle because that means she can never lose weight permanently because whenever she loses weight guys will hurt on her it makes her feel uncomfortable and she'll get more weight back. So the the answer the therapist had for her 
particular case was to be honest when guys hit on her and straight up tell them that she's not very comfortable with that and don't be nice quote unquote nice to them because when most people are being when some people are being nice they're not being genuinely nice they either being nice to get something from the other person or they're being nice and at the expense of themselves and when you're coming from that place you're not really giving value to other person by being nice you're actually trying to get their approval and in a way you're taking value instead of giving value so that's the kind of a tricky area that most people don't know about and yeah when I'm thinking about sexuality it makes me realize that maybe I'm maybe sometimes I am quite comfortable with talking about sex but whenever the other person but I don't think I'm that comfortable to, I think I'm comfortable talking about sex but whenever sometimes when I'm with girls and I think girls are scared to talk about sex but in reality it's me sometimes guys project their own value or they try to be they try to empathize with a girl but and they try to say or do things that they think is that will benefit the girl but in reality because of their limited experience they don't really know what's what the girl wants and in my case I find that I, sometimes I do I can't talk about sex with girls but usually I feel more comfortable talking about it after we had sex because it doesn't become like this taboo subject between you and a girl whereas before you kind of have to step like kind of escalate it you can talk about like oh how have you ever had your first kiss what was your first kiss like yeah have you have you ever had what was your first do you remember what your first kiss like do you remember what your first kiss was like do you remember what your first kiss was like do you remember who your first crush was um do you remember the first time you had sex do you remember how you lost your virginity do you do you have ever have sex in crazy places sex talk it's fun it's not necessary in a, on a date most importantly is having fun like don't force a sex talk for the sake of doing a sex talk do it coming from the place of exploring her sexuality and exploring your own sexuality and that's what's important in getting to know each other you want to know if this person has similar sexuality as you because you don't want someone who doesn't really have a big doesn't really have a high sex drive you want someone who can match yours and you want someone you want a girl who has high self-esteem as well so they don't use sex as a weapon to trade stuff with you in a relationship and you see you see this on TV a lot especially with women who are withholding sex when their husband is not um, behaving in a way that they want or chody in a pickup term where they want their husband to behave like a child um, behaving in a way that makes them for me or for that makes the girl feel more secure and if you think about it if someone wants to make them make themselves feel more, feel more secure by using you or manipulating you with sex that just means they are insecure with themselves anyway 
Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna go watch Captain America, the new movie, the Cold, the Civil War. I was gonna say the Cold War, but I guess ah uh, similar Civil War with Iron Man and Captain America. Personally, I'm on Iron Man's side because why wouldn't you? It's fucking Iron Man. Captain America just feels like a fucking nice guy <laughs> who got his, who has like very firm morals that he holds on to so tightly that he's not very flexible to deal with the world and those that's a very dangerous thing to have when you're holding on to your morals so bad that they don't really work for you anymore then it's gonna turn your friends into enemies Maybe like in a in a movie, the Civil War. I'm just guessing. I don't. I haven't even read the comics for Captain America, but I'm guessing that's what the movie is about. Uh, I guess Captain America is doesn't want to turn against his friends, and he also doesn't want to doesn't want his morals being challenged or being controlled so he turned against the government I'm not saying the government is always right but you have to look at it from both sides I don't know if you guys have heard of the actor observer bias it's a phenomenon in psychology where the actor well, the person acting on some kind of intent will always try to rationalize that what they're doing is completely rational, even though it might hurt another person, but they don't think the damage is that severe. Whereas the person observing that person <coughs> will think that uh, that person is evil, that person is inconsiderate, that person is doing dangerous stuff at the expense of others. But in reality, um, we are all subconsciously subjected to that phenomenon. And a very easy example is that when a person is crossing the road, or when a person, sorry, when a person is um, crossing the red light when they're driving, of course, the person driving will think, I'm in a rush, It's and I'm going to be late for work. I hope you guys understand, even though I, I, might have, I might kill someone by doing this. And whereas the person crossing the road will think, oh my god, what a fucking jerk, just cross the road like that. It's completely subjective. And now I'm going to do a random rants for uh, two minutes non-stop talking about every anything and everything by getting presents uh, haircuts I need a haircut I, I remember I like I kind of like my haircut now because the undercut on the sides and when you have undercut on the sides that seems to be what's what's in now but what I don't like about it is sometimes the fringe can get too long too fast and it's just annoying as fuck but um, I look at my photos from the past when I had short fringe um, I have to say I look better with a fringe now than without a fringe sometimes I try to do the whole thing the whole pompadour 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 thing but it just I just don't know I don't think my hair is made for that because whenever I do that it just goes to it just goes messy. It's just very messy, and I don't like it. And I don't. I mean, I could do it, but it's just messy. And even though it's kind of sexy when you do that, now, I don't know how people can make like two minutes hair tutorial and come up with this perfect hair, perfect pompadour in under two minutes. To me, that just feels like fucking impossible to do. Like for me to do that, I have to use like half the hair wax and just put the shit on and I and don't touch it for the hot, don't touch it for the rest of the day. 
or just keep doing it for the rest of the day so it stays there but my hair has never been that easily manageable um, the hairdresser I usually go to she just moved back to Japan so now I'm stuck with I wouldn't say I'm stuck with now I'm left now I can only go to this other Japanese guy who is not as good but still pretty good and knows how to give a good haircut and there was also this other Japanese girl working at a hair salon I usually go to she's new and I remember last time um, I tried to ask her out but I was so fucking nervous I just couldn't do it the only reason I was nervous because I wanted to go back to that place to get another haircut simply because uh, this town is so small and the only uh, one good place is to get a haircut in my opinion I've tried other places but uh, no offense to white people but they don't really know how to cut Asian hair or specifically my hair because I've heard that Asian hairs are very thick and coarse and they're not as easily textured as brown hair or blonde hair like most white guys have that's why that's why white guys or guys with color hair their hair is so easily textured that they don't really have to do much about it and it just looks fucking good and that's what I want to do as well and as you can see most Asian girls these days have their hair color brown orange, gray, blue, yellow just to look, you know, sexy, cute nothing wrong with that you know, I do think that most Asian girls when they have their hair colored they look kinda... they look hot, they look better compared to just black whereas it's funny how the grass always seems greener on the other side because you can see white girls who wants to dye their hair black and there's this girl who I was dating um, back in January she was very into Asian, girl, Asian guys and just the other day I saw her posting this uh, article on uh, hotly Hollywood should recruit hot Asian guys just to break the stereotype of this nerdy Asian guy that can't get girls or they're very awkward and stuff I mean that's how they portray in the movies but that's not necessarily who they are in real life and that kind of go against Asian guys in dating some people may think that but I think not because people can tell who you are just by the way you act and if you act very loud and open kind of like a white guy or a western guy then people will automatically assume that stereotype doesn't apply to you and it's the same for Indian guys now uh, I remember on the forum there's a lot of debate about Indian guys not getting white girls but I don't think so there's a lot of Indian guys who I know speaks who I know are doing very well with girls and I think the only reason is because when you look at them you can't really tell that you don't really think they're Indians you think okay they are Indians by ethnicity but just by the way they behave the way they say things the way they talk to you they're just very open they're very friendly and you don't really think that and they're just someone you want to be around with and then you see their